Time. Hi. I'm Michael Terry. Um, someone once told me that the work I'm doing, my work with kids, was important to the country. But uh, I'm afraid that, uh, that I don't think that way because if I did, I'd, I'd be too intimidated to, to face it each morning. Laugh track? I just sweet it was already on the tape this morning. But I think what that person was trying to say is that uh, the kids that I work with, the kids that come to my ranch, the kids that fall through the cracks of our system, they're our kids. And all of us here know that. The loyal and benevolent order of the Oaks cares about kids. Your Bucks for Kids program last year raised over a million dollars for the very kids that I'm talking about. And so for the next hour or so, I'd like to share with you some, some stories of some of the kids that, that I've had at the ranch. And those of you with teenagers at home will know what I'm talking about. But we've had some pretty interesting kids out at the ranch. I remember this is one kid, he, he had to be about oh, five foot nothing. <laughs> he, uh, he was trying to hold his bear trap open, but he couldn't. And, and, and we were all working with chainsaws, so and he was going, help, help me. But we, because of the chainsaws, we couldn't hear him. <laughs> he managed to get the, the bear trap up over, over his head. And, his <laughs> and then for about three hours, he was walking around going, help me, help me. But we couldn't hear him. <laughs> Chainsaws. But if I could be serious for just a minute, the single most important thing, uh, the cardinal rule in dealing with kids is, is just to listen to them. To let them know that, that you care. And, uh, that what they're saying, what they're feeling, what they're thinking is important. In conclusion, let me just say that I've never been ashamed to ask for support, and tonight's no exception. If the members of the Benevolent Order of Bucks donate to the ranch program, you're not just helping my kids, you're helping the ranch Bucks kids. Whew. Well, that was something, huh? Quite the sound mixing job, Vic. Well, I had to improvise. It sounded like you were talking to an empty room. Oh, really? I can't imagine why. Good night. Good night. You staying up? I don't know. What are you going to do? I go to bed, I guess. I thought I'd step and read. Yeah, well, I might do that too. Good speech, huh? You fell asleep with the rest of us. Whoa, that's weird. Yeah, the same thing happened the night Ed came back. Who's Ed? Your worst nightmare now. Do you really want to know who Ed is? Yeah, who's Ed? Let me go check on the horses. I'll tell you. Being reminded of that night. Maybe we should talk about it, huh? Yeah, we could. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind talking about it. Tell me about what happened. We know what happened. Do we? You were there. if we don't talk about what happened.
something precious. It's getting pretty wild out there. I'm going to sleep. No. Wait for Vic. He's going to be all night trying to get the power back on. You want to know about Ed? It was stormy that night. We had a warm fire going, and someone said I should close the kitchen window because there was rain coming in. I figure we're as good as dead. No, no, no. Ernie. Over. Anxious young Ernie. If you're going to tell the tale, you have to begin at the beginning. Let's find out why the power window. I've got to tell you the truth, Lee. We don't know. I'm shaking. So, Ed... Ed was a kid at the ranch who came back. That's timing. It all started one weekend a few weeks back, the weekend that Michael gave his speech at the convention, the same weekend that Fox left for Oregon. Who's Fox? You'll find out. That fateful weekend, Michael left me in charge. Vic, you're in charge. I have the bridge. And Fox, you don't mind dipping around at night, helping out with the kids? Just as long as I don't have to talk to anybody. <laughs> That's the spirit. And remember, if anybody gives you a hard time, call me at the hotel. Mm, don't worry, boss. The member of the resort is uh, on my desk. I don't, don't think worry, anybody boss. should give you a hard time, though. No, they're a pretty good bunch of kids. Don't worry, boss. Maybe you should bring another coat. Oh, she don't need a coat. Look, it's a beautiful day. We'll be back tomorrow. Do you have your speech? Yes, sir, right here. OK, everybody, best stay out of trouble. Yeah. Bye. 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 Break a leg. Bye. Eleanor. Mine's got air conditioning. You just said you wanted a warm coat. <laughs> Mine. See ya. Bye, Michael. Yeah. Bye, Eleanor. Bye. See you guys. Wait a minute, Eleanor. This thing is a camera. Sorry. Boom tin. Bye. Bye. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. I can't. Have a good time. Bye. Don't worry about us. So who's Ed? I'm getting to that. OK. Who wants uh, to repair the back fence? No. Anyone? Anyone? Really? No. Do me a favor, will you? Can you do this? Well, like this? Good. A volunteer. Yeah. Perfect. That's it. All right, I'm on dinner tonight, and I need an assistant. Who's the, oh, Ben. Good. 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 All right. Now, you all know that Michael's away today, and you're not going to have the day that you're used to, but if we all stay. Are we expecting anyone? Oh, boy. Ed? Ed. Ed, what are you doing here? Hey, Fox. Uh, I'm here to see Eleanor. Well, she's not here right now. Oh. Well, you can come back tomorrow. Well, uh... Eleanor! I'm here! Ed, uh, she's not here, and I wouldn't lie to you. You know that. Michael's speaking at a convention, and she's gone along with him now. That's the truth. Oh. Can I wait? No, you can't. I'm really looking forward to seeing her. I, I know you are. I can see that. OK. Oh. See you tomorrow. Right. That's it? That's Ed? You had to be there, man. No. You had to know why Ed was sent to the ranch in the first place. Six months before that, Ed was sent to the ranch for stalking the woman who does the weather on Channel 51. And he taped the weather report every single night just so he could watch her all the time. Ed was so crazy about her, he followed her to work and home. Finally, when the woman almost went crazy herself, she got a restraining order, and when Ed broke it, he got sent to the ranch. Michael helped him with his weather lady fixation and sent him to a group home in Vancouver. But Ed got a, a crush on Eleanor. The man's quick. So what'd you do? I did what any man in a position of responsibility would do. Yeah, hello? Vic? No, we haven't even checked in yet. What's the problem? Ed came by. Our Ed? Yeah, to see Eleanor. Eleanor? Bearing flowers. I think Eleanor's the new weather lady. Oh, no. What'd you tell him? Well, I told him you'd be back tomorrow. He said fine, and he left. Yeah, good thinking. Uh, I guess we'll deal with it when we get back tomorrow. 
Okay, boss. You having fun yet? Uh, not just yet, no. Bye. Why don't you say my name? Do you remember Ed, the stalker? Yeah, nice little Ed, yeah. No. No, unstable little Ed. He just showed up at the ranch with some flowers for you. For me? Yeah. He never showed any signs of attraction to you when he was in the program, did he? No. no I mean, so. the last time I talked to him was when I called him on his birthday. You called him on his birthday? Yes, Michael. I was following up. We always do that with the kids. Not with kids that... Michael. Eleanor, if you'd given this any thought... Michael, he's a sad boy. I mean, I was the only person that called him. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh yes. We knew Ed was a bit dingy, especially where the weather woman was concerned. But I didn't find out till later that Eleanor was probably the only person in the six months since he left the ranch who was nice to him. To Ed, nice was an invitation. So I'm standing there with this little metal thing I used to Jimmy Locks up him with, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's in my hand like this. Huh. And the cop sees it. Huh? I know he knows what it is. And he knows I know he knows what it is, but I'm with my mom, right? right. And we're in church, so he doesn't want to do anything about it. Yeah. Did you see something? What? I thought I saw somebody. Well, you want me to go take a look? No, no, it's not important. Never mind. So you were with the pick and the thing and the policeman in the church and... And I was, like, showing him, trying to prove to him that he couldn't get to me as long as we were in the house of... Excuse me, Secretary. Vic! I thought I heard something. Vic. I just had some bad news. My uh, older sister just passed away. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I hadn't seen her in about 16 years. But that lazy, no good husband of hers didn't even call me. He just sent a telegram. Can you believe that? Annie's not expecting me to turn up for the funeral. Well, I guess he doesn't know you very well. <laughs> oh, he knows me. That's why the 16 years. Well, the fact of the matter is we weren't close. But she was my sister, and the service is in Oregon, and it's tomorrow. Well, you go. I can, I can handle things. Are you sure? Do you want to call Michael or something? So I told her. We'll be fine. Mistake. Yeah. Big one. I'll be back in a couple of days. Are you positive you're not going to need the Jimmy? I can't think of a reason. Well, <clears throat> so long, Vic. Keep an eye on Broom for me. I will, and if you see Ed along the I road... know. I'll take him where he needs to go. Don't get into trouble. never saw Ed along the road, because Ed never left. Well, if we're going to talk about it, we should begin at the beginning. Which was right after the car broke down. No, the beginning was before that. Are you suggesting what happened before the car broke down was part of the reason what happened happened? I mean, what about the boat ride? The boat ride was okay. Oh, you loved it. You know, I really should be working on my speech. Oh, you'll be fine. This is ridiculous, Eleanor. It's just a drizzle. It's gonna stop. Drizzle? How many people are gonna be at that thing tonight? Um, well, there's two keynote speakers, and I'm not really sure. Got it. Okay, the other guy is. But the organizers assure me that they'll probably split half and half, so I'd say about 300. 300? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm nervous. Move your bum. Oh. Hey. Is that light supposed to be on? Where? This one on the camera thingy here. Yes, it just means that the batteries are charged.
This is kind of nice, isn't it? I told you this was a good idea. Hey, look over there. Look, look. Don't scare. Isn't that... Isn't that Buddy Hackett? Oh, get out of town. It is. <laughs> it is. It is. It's Buddy... Get the camera. Get the camera. Okay. okay. Now... Wait, get the camera okay, on him. Okay, okay. I'm sure it's the record, but... Okay, I've got... Where is it? Okay, I got it. <laughs> I got so while Michael and Eleanor were having fun in the country and Fox drove to Oregon, me and the kids were holding down the fort. Soup's on soon, guys. Curry like you've never experienced. They're gonna like curry. My secret ingredients ice cream, change your mind? More like change my shirt. I just puke. As long as you're doing the laundry. So pretty weird the bad guy came by with flowers for Eleanor. You know what I heard from a guy that was here before I showed? He was here the same time Ed was. The guy told me he was a total psycho. What do you mean? Well, Ed was in love with this weather woman, right? But when he was rejected, this guy told me he snuck into her closet, cut all her dresses up with a pair of scissors. But when she got home, Ed was still in the closet with the scissors. Are you serious? This is one crazy dude. So what's this? Eleanor's. She was gonna wear it to the convention, but she found it all bunched up in a suitcase. She asked me to hand wash it. This one too? <laughs> snip, snip, snip. That's not funny. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't know Ed was on the roof. All we knew was that we were having a quiet night at home. And Michael was about to give the speech from hell. Testing, testing. I think we should wait till everybody gets here, Michael. Uh, probably a meeting went overtime. We'll give him another five minutes. Hello? 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 Uh, uh, ready when you are, Dr. Terry? Aren't you going to wait for everyone? Well, this is everyone. This is everyone? Well, of course you know we have two keynote speakers every year. What's that? The other speaker. It's packed in there. He's very popular with us. <laughs> you, you've got Buddy Hackett in there, don't you? How did you know? Oh, we saw him down by the lake. Isn't and, he and great? we got him on video. He's very funny. <laughs> How am I supposed to compete with Buddy Hackett? I have to apologize, Doctor. I did expect some of the Bucks would prefer to hear you. <laughs> This is some? As opposed to 300. What? Dumbass. You organized it. Excuse me. Hello. Uh, the, Buddy's just starting, and I'm sure these gentlemen would rather listen to Buddy Hackett. I know I'd rather listen to Buddy Hackett. <laughs> Look at these men are on the Bucks for Kids Committee. Besides, Buddy is a bit spicy for a lot of them. <laughs> you are interested in receiving a donation, aren't you? <laughs> Of course. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. I didn't mean to upset you. you got to listen to this guy. I know. I'm, hi. I'm Michael Terry. Um, someone once told me that the work I'm doing, my work with kids, was important to the country. But uh, I'm afraid that, uh, that I don't think that way because if I did, I'd, I'd be too intimidated to, to face it each morning. <laughs> but I think what that person was trying to say is that uh, kids are important. And all of us here know that. So for the next hour or so, I'd like to share with you some, <laughs> some stories of some of the kids that, that I've had at the ranch. I remember the first year that we were in operation, long before we had an administrator running things. I used to handle the books myself. Or, but any kid that had better than a C plus in math used to help me out with the books. 
And that proved to be quite interesting around about tax time, let me tell you. But we've had some pretty interesting kids out at the ranch. I remember there's this one kid, he, he had to be about oh, five foot nothing. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he was trying to hold his bear trap open, but he couldn't. And, uh, and we were all working with chainsaws, so he was going, help, help me. But we, because of the chainsaws, we couldn't hear him. <laughs> he, uh, he managed to get the, the bear trap up over, over his head, and it went <laughs> And then for about three hours, he was wandering around going, help me, help me. <laughs> but we couldn't hear him, because we had the chainsaws. <laughs> There's nobody hacking, but it gave me a chuckle. Michael faced a demon that night. Uh, he faced the benevolent and loyal order of Bucks Convention with the courage of a man driven. But out of an order of nearly 600, Michael only got seven bucks, which was roughly the amount they donated. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the ranch, we had our own demon. He must have waited outside through the night. And though I kept hearing music, I was sure I was imagining it. You know, that my mind was just playing tricks on me and everything was just fine. This speech was my fault, don't you? No. You can admit it. There's nothing to admit. You're not going to hurt me, Michael. Well, I admit it wasn't what I expected. So what else didn't you expect? Are you sure we're on the right road? Of course we're on the right road. Your alternator lights on. Don't worry about that. It always does that. Of course, if we need a new one, we can just buy one with some of the money we got from the bucks. Michael, don't make me feel any worse than I already do, okay? When they say the buck stops here, they're not kidding, are they? Forget it. You don't think I'm capable of anything. Fine. I keep your program running, Michael. I run your program and you're not even there. You do. I know you do. And do you respect me for it? No, you don't. Don't turn the car off. Apparently, I can't do anything right. Drive. Eleanor. Oh, man. You're doing it wrong. Yeah, that must be it. I'm doing it wrong. Well, what did you do? I told you, the alternator light was on. God, he's gonna tell me I told you so. The light was on. And that's supposed to tell me something. Yes. <sighs> Dead. Well, don't we have a spare? No. We promised Vic we'd be there at three. Well, Vic's a big boy now. Yeah, but he promised Ed. No one ever won a war by being photographed for his country. He won the war by letting the other poor dumb guy get photographed for his country. But I digress. The name of the game is Capture the Flag. You are the blue team and you are the... Anyone? The red team. The red team. Each camera contains one cartridge of film for ten shots. Don't waste ammo. I'll be judging the photographs for color, clarity, and if I can tell who it is. So what if you can't? Then you're still alive! But if I know it's you, you're dead. Ready? Yes, yes sir. sir. Ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Michael and Eleanor are due back in an hour or so. There's no winner by then. The winning team will be the one to get the first shot of them wondering where we are. And go! Uh -huh. 
Found the problem. Oh, was that stuck in the engine? Yeah, that's right. Michael, you know, sometimes your sarcasm is... This is an alternator belt. The alternator charges the battery. When you turned the car off, there was no charge left. Well, it's not your fault. The thing's shot. Probably would have broken down in a few minutes. Eh? Don't you ever think of getting your belts checked once in a while? No, as a matter of fact, Michael, it didn't cross my mind. You've got pantyhose on, don't you? Yes. Give them to me, will you? I beg your pardon? I want them to fix the car. Oh, okay. My pantyhose are going to fix the car now. That's right. You're joking. No. Michael, I admit that I do not know a lot about this. Have you never heard of somebody using pantyhose as a temporary fan belt? Or in this case... Alternator belt. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I have heard that, Michael. Thank you very much. You know, you could have just told me. Huh? Mind. <clears throat> oh, great, those are ruined. Nah, you can have them back when we're done. I got you. No way, man. Raf! 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 I got, I got you, Ernie. You first squirt. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Let me see the picture. Ernie's I cheating. Him. I got him. I got him first. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, uh oh, Ben, you're dead. <laughs> you see? Ernie shot first. The film hasn't even ejected from Ben's camera yet. But what puzzles me is this flash from no. the grassy knoll behind Ernie. There can be no other explanation. There had to be a second photographer. Bang! Ernie, you're dead. What do you mean? Let's see. Oh, she got gotcha. you. Oh, man. Ernie, you're dead, man. Good shooting, Mary. <clears throat> Walk this way. But if it was almost three o'clock, didn't Ed come looking for Eleanor? You see? He's interested now. And you're right. He did. Probably got one more shot. Oh, I just hope there's enough juice in the battery for one more dry. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm ready when you are. Okay. You know that if this doesn't work, we're a hundred miles from nowhere. We're going to be spending the night here. Well, if it means anything, they're very good pantyhose. So. Okay. Okay, if those pantyhose are half as good as you say they are, they should get us to the next gas station. <laughs> and Eleanor, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry that I've been so uh, tense. 
I've been tense too. What was that speech? It was those bucks. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know. Let's just go home, okay? Right on. Okay. Stronger? Mary, what happened? Ed. Ed? I saw him. I, I got a picture. Are you okay? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Let's see. It's Ed. I, I got a picture. No, I don't think so. <laughs> it's this big. It's a squirrel, Mary. No, it's Ed. You know, I think Ed's a bit taller than that. Now, come on. All right. I saw him. I declare a tie. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Vic, that means that nobody wins. Yeah, just like in more real piece, huh? Oh, that's great. We came out here for the next Have been home by now. Uh, yeah, well, if we wouldn't have taken this logging road, then you'd get your belts checked every once in a while. You know, if you would let me buy a phone for the If you hadn't planned a stupid phone. speaking engagement stupid. in the first place. Now I know what you really think of me. No, Eleanor. You don't. They're not here yet? Nope. Shouldn't take this long. That's what I've been thinking. Finally. So what you looking at? Nothing. Go eat your dinner. Yeah, well, thanks again. For... Just go in. I'll be there in a minute. Anybody up here? Ed? Ed, is that you? in a movie. Turn it up, Ben. Come on, let's go. Come on, turn it up. fell as I lay there, unconscious. The wave of murder which is sweeping the eastern third of the nation is being committed by creatures who feast upon the flesh of their victims. First eyewitness accounts this. of this grisly Mary, it hasn't even started yet. The ranch kids were intentionally terrifying themselves. And as for Michael and Eleanor... We might as well get used to the idea of spending the night here. Shouldn't we build a fire or something? Well, it might get a little smoky in here, but I'm game if you are. I mean outside. <laughs> no, you're better off in here. Hope these seats fall back. Ah! Ah, that's better. <sighs> now, if we can get some sleep, we'll be able to start back to the resort at first light. Wait a minute, you said that we're better off in here, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what's out there? Nothing. Um, trees, owls, bears, maybe. Bears? Oh, relax, Eleanor. There's bears in the hills behind the ranch. You never told me that. Well, don't worry about it. 
They're not gonna bite you as soon as you get out of the car or anything. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's up there? Look, just look. It's right in the road, looking at us, right up there. Look, look, look. Oh, it's a uh, possum. Well, are they dangerous? No, look, they're perfectly harmless. <laughs> are you sure? It doesn't look like a bear. I mean, it looks like a bear to me. It's not a bear, Eleanor. I'll prove it to you. Do you want anything from the trunk while I'm out there? Be right back. <laughs> You're right, it's a bear. What kind? Big, big, big bear. I mean, can he get in here? No, no, not unless he, you know, tries to. Shut up, okay? Yeah. I can't watch this. I'm going with you. Get back in the cell. It's just me. It's just me. Okay. Is everybody okay in here? What happened to you? I fell. Thanks for caring. Turn that down. What you coming? Come on. The phone's dead. What's going on? I bumped into Ed. Ed? He's out there? Stay away from the windows. What's going on, Vic? Okay, everybody listen up. Ed was first sent to the ranch for stalking the weather woman on Channel 51. The TV people tried to keep him away from her by lying all the time about where she was. Finally, he figured out they were lying to him and broke into her house. And now he's after Eleanor. He thinks we're trying to keep her from him. Where is Mike and Eleanor? I don't know. They should have called by now. Why don't we get the Jimmy and get out of here? Fox took it. Look, never mind. I want everybody to stay put. Is that clear? Yeah. What are you going to do? Go stalk a stalker. Okay, it's all right, Mary. Stay here, all right? Uh, light some candles and light a fire. Power may not last much longer, okay? Waste of time. Mm hmm? I was thinking about this whole weekend and the whole weekend was just a waste of time. I mean, that donation we got was hardly worth our effort. Yeah. No, don't blame yourself. Well, at least we have that video of your speech. Maybe Vic can do something with it later, huh? It's a video of Buddy Hackett I want to see. <laughs> yeah, it was funny, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I sure was. I'm sorry, anyway. God, if anybody should apologize, it's me. Nah. It was my stupid idea. I went along with it. Yeah, but we're stuck in my stupid car. My stupid pantyhose couldn't even get us out of this. Well, you can hardly blame your pantyhose on her. Yeah, but... Sometimes, I mean, I try... I try to do things right, and everything comes up wrong. I mean, it's like an avalanche. God, I bet we freeze to death. You are cold, aren't you? Yes, I'm cold. Oh. What are you doing? Oh, buddy. Buddy. <laughs> I'm not crushing it, have I? I know, I'm very comfortable, actually. How are you? Never been better. <laughs>
guess I should try and get some sleep. You know, this type of thing doesn't usually happen to me. I know what you mean. when she gets back, Ed. But she's not here right now. You're gonna have to believe me, Ed. in the window. Yeah, it was probably a reflection. I saw him, all right? I thought I told you to light a bunch of candles. Don't yell at me. This is the only one. OK, I'm sorry. All right, this is what we're going to do. Who's upstairs? We're all here. Give me this. All right, everybody stay put. You're going to go up there? Yeah? scissors. about what a wonderful person Eleanor was until the phones came back on and then we called the police. And they had to shoot him. Nope, not really. Actually, uh, Ed's in therapy right now. I'm gonna go visit him next week. You sucked me in. You guys completely sucked me in. Pleasant dreams, boys. <laughs> Nightly. Wait a minute, what about Michael and Eleanor? So I guess we can both safely say that, that we don't regret what no, happened. No, no, I don't regret it. Dad, it probably shouldn't happen no, again. No, it probably shouldn't. No, it won't. It won't. 
certainly not here. Yeah, no, totally unprofessional. Yeah, yeah. Good. Well, you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to just go to bed. Or maybe I'll stay up for a while. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Hey guys. Hi, hi. Uh, we, we were just um, on the roof and the bar. Yeah, he was we're not tired. Yeah, we're <laughs> we'll fired. We're just oh, posting oh, marshmallows. Marshmallows. Oh, oh, marshmallows, yeah. Thank you. Oh, it's, <laughs> well, it's all right to see you. We thought. Yeah, it's okay, man. So, um, the more the merrier. You look like you just seen a ghost, Lee. Oh, Vic just uh, just told me about Ed. Ah, uh, Ed. Scary, huh? Do you guys want to hear something real scary? Have you ever seen a grizzly bear? Well, one night, me and Eleanor were stuck in a car all night. And we said, 